This is part one of a three-part series, where we will be looking at the short and promising lifespan of the Climax Graphics Game Studio, or other known as Crazy Games Incorporated. This first episode will be looking at the life of Shinya Nishigaki, the birth of Climax Graphics, and its eventual demise. Part two of the series will contain a detailed analysis of Blue Stinger, and part three will do the same for Illbleed. With that having been said, I hope you enjoy the video. Shinya Nishigaki was born in 1962 and was raised in the port city of Osaka. His father, Masao Nishigaki, was an advertising executive for Toho Studios, most famously known today for being one of Japan's largest film companies and for producing the original Godzilla film. Due to Masao's position in the company, Shinya was regularly allowed to watch early movie screenings not only for Japanese release titles, but many films imported from both the United States and Europe. These early experiences would go on to influence Shinya for the rest of his life. Shinya would attend college at Aoyama Gaken University. Here, he would join a film club, continue his love of film, and practice camera placement in short films produced by the club. He graduated from Aoyama Gaken University at the age of 22 with an economics degree, and would soon find a job at the Diaco Advertising Agency. He would gain exposure to the booming video game market and make connections with several companies, like Enix. Quitting his advertisement job at the age of 26, he would work for Enix and help with the English localization of Dragon's Quest 2 II and 3. After his work on Dragon Quest III, Shinya moved companies again, this time to Climax Entertainment. In 1992, he was a scenario writer for Landstalker, which found some moderate success in American markets and was reviewed well, often scoring 6 out of 10s. Shinya would go on to be a producer for two more games, the first being Lady Stalker, Challenge from the Past, which would release in 95, but only in Japan. It too reviewed fairly well, finding itself at a solid 7 out of 10. Lastly, Shinya helped produce the hit Sega Saturn game, Dark Savior. Dark Savior would go on to receive universal praise for early 3D platforming and gameplay that would evolve depending on how well the player completed certain objectives. It reviewed very well and is often considered a forgotten gem of the era. After having completed five projects, two of which were production jobs and fairly strong review scores on all of his works, Shinya decided he wanted to head his own project, one with a more cinematic experience. However, Climax Entertainment wanted to maintain the status quo, and continued to work on RPGs and racing titles. Shinya took a chance and started his new sister company, Climax Graphics. This studio was located in the Shinjuku district of Tokyo. This way, the company could stay within 15 minutes of Climax Entertainment, and the two studios could share design and technical skills. Development of Climax Graphics' first game, Blue Stinger, would begin in 1997, though pre-production had started when Shinya was still working for Climax Entertainment in 96. Shinya brought with him a small staff of 18 employees, but had some all-stars mixed into the cast. Masaki Sagawa, who would later be famous for his manga Basilisk, would help structure the game's horror storyline and created the designs for the main characters. Toshihiko Sasashi, most famous for creating the score in many shows like Hunter x Hunter and The Big O, was the composer for Blue Stinger's soundtrack. He claims it was the first time he created a music composition for a video game, and was told by Shinya to make a Hollywood-style movie score. Many tracks in the game were based off of Die Hard, sharing a Christmas and action theme that contrasted well with the horror-ridden environment. He also composed two 50-piece orchestra tracks that are used in the opening and closing CG cutscenes of the game. Lastly, Shinya himself was the main writer and producer, but would assign directing duties to Ayomi Kojima due to a lack of experience. Blue Stinger would be published by Sega for the Japanese release, and Activision for the rest of the world. Blue Stinger was a launch title for the Dreamcast, and found its way onto shelves one month before the Dreamcast would release in the US markets. Climax Graphics were an unknown studio, but Blue Stinger still sold 500,000 units which Activision and Climax Entertainment were more than happy with. Blue Stinger received mixed reviews, 
with complaints stemming from poor voice acting and an awkward camera position that played against the game's horror themes. Shinya would notably talk about camera position in his interview with John Anderson, saying that Activision wanted the camera changed and forced the change with the threat of cancelling production. The sales were still good enough to put Climax Graphics on the map, and Activision immediately asked if they would be producing a Blue Stinger 2. Climax Graphics denied this offer though, for production on Illbleed had already begun. While Blue Stinger was trying to use theatrical qualities to enhance and define its gameplay, Illbleed was a love letter to the B-movie horror genre. There are plenty of references to movies like Tremors, Chucky, and Toy Story, and some jabs at Sonic as well. Illbleed's development time was roughly a year and a half long, and Climax Games had learned from their previous mistakes on Blue Stinger. A new engine was developed just for Illbleed, which allowed for four selectable camera angles on the fly. On top of this, certain scenes would have set camera angles to heighten tension, much like Resident Evil. The bad lip-syncing complaints were fixed by just not having any to begin with. The team decided with the limited amount of development time that they had, they would remove lip-syncing altogether, instead of putting out a poor job. This decision would garner no attention from reviewers, which was exactly what they wanted. But the most important development was the horror monitor. The horror monitor is a unique mechanic to Illbleed, one that allows you to monitor the player's health, manage heart rates, and spot potential deadly traps. Not only was the horror monitor a wholly unique concept, it also gave the player a first-person perspective to view the world. Shinya had stated in the past that he loved camera angles and thought it was one of the most important aspects of a cinematic experience, and Illbleed delivers on this in many ways. Illbleed and Blue Stinger had fully 3D rendered worlds, a feat that did not come easily for its time. Being able to explore these worlds from multiple angles and multiple perspectives was what Shinya had been going for from the start. Though everything wasn't sunshine and rainbows, while development for Illbleed went smoothly, some outside factors would come to hurt the company in the near future. In the summer of 2000, Sega of America announced that they would no longer be including Illbleed into their list of first party releases, instead opting to allow other third party companies the chance to show themselves off. Climax Graphics would then sell the publishing rights to another company named Jalico. But this would come with its own string of problems since Jalco's parent company was financially struggling and would eventually be bought off by Hong Kong telecommunications company PCCW. But the biggest punch had yet been thrown. On January 21st, 2001, Sega announced that the company would be discontinuing production of the Dreamcast, just two years after it had released in American markets, and two months before Illbleed would release. Any game released for a dead market is always a bad thing, as stores will slowly remove products for the dying console in exchange for new fresh consoles that they can advertise for several years. Climax Graphics knew this in an attempt to generate some kind of buzz, they changed their name to Crazy Games Incorporated in February of 2001. Illbleed was released to the Japanese market on March 29th, 2001, right when production lines for the Dreamcast had ended. Unfortunately, since their new publisher, PCCW took their time in establishing a new company to replace Jalico in the USA, named AIA, Illbleed wouldn't be released to American markets until April 26, 2001, almost a whole month late. A translated version would also be released in China in October, and 300 known copies were sold in Taiwan. But when everything was said and done, Illbleed only sold 50,000 copies internationally a near 10% of what Blue Stinger had sold just two years before. AIA and Crazy Games blamed the poor sales on Sega's announcement, but multiple factors could be blamed for these lackluster sales. Of course the end of the Dreamcast production was the biggest factor, but the late release in North American markets clearly hurt sales. The decision to change the company's name probably didn't help matters either, as the average customer would not have known the company changed names and wouldn't be able to recognize Crazy Games as the guys who made Blue Stinger. And most buyers would not likely trust a new developer and new publisher at the same time. Game reviews didn't help much with there being a fundamental misunderstanding in the atmosphere of Illbleed. Illbleed was marketed as a survival horror game. And while those mechanics are certainly present, its B-movie nature and comedic approach did not mesh well with audiences, resulting in middling review scores that would further hurt its sales. You'll vomit with excitement. You'll puke with pleasure. You'll shit with fear. 
Illbleed by many means was considered a financial failure. But this didn't dissuade Crazy Games as they began helping Sega's in-house developer, Hitmaker, develop arcade games. The one project Crazy Games is credited for working on was a rail shooter called The Maze of Kings. Sega attempted to support Crazy Games as much as they could, but they were also going through restructuring after the failure of the Dreamcast, and in December of 2002, Crazy Games would close its doors for good. This was an over for Shinya Nishigaki. Fortunately for him and his staff, a Tokyo-based game developer that went under the name Kavia would pick them up. Kavia is the team that would eventually develop the Dragon Guard series and Nier. Here, Shinya and his team would work on an undisclosed project for two years. But tragedy would once again follow Shinya and his team, and on February 14th, 2004, Shinya Nishigaki would be discovered dead in his apartment from a heart attack at the age of 42. Shinya was never credited for his work at Kavya, leaving Maze of Kings as his last known game. Shinya Nishigaki's life was one full of promise that was tragically cut short. His love for movies and cinema would follow him wherever he went, and unlike many developers at the time, he was willing to take risks and try to provide a true cinematic experience in a video game format. His first release, Blue Stinger, had already shown lots of promise, but was clearly made by a first-time team. What made Shinya and his studio so impressive was how quickly they were able to learn from these previous mistakes. Illbleed was truly a step up in quality in so many ways, whether it was its tighter gameplay in general, removal of poor lip syncing, or even the fact that they developed a new engine just to accommodate camera controls. Blue Stinger and Illbleed are truly strange but fascinating pieces of art that many more people should be exposed to. Shinya's work wasn't the most polished piece but it was one that was focused on really entertaining the player. It's a damn shame that the world didn't take a bigger notice to this man when he was around. His absence and his potential will sorely be missed. I hope you tune in for the next part of this series, where we will be taking an in-depth look at Shinya Nishigaki's first release, Blue Stinger. <laughs>